Okay, we're finally ready to define the trigonometric functions of right triangles. Uh, I want to warn you, I'm going pretty fast in this video because there's a lot to cover here in 6.2. Um, if you got a right triangle, that just means it has a 90 degree angle, right? That means these other two angles have to add up to 90. We call these other two angles complementary angles. They also have to be acute angles. That just means each of them is less than 90 degrees. Anyway, this is how we, we define the, the trigonometric functions for right triangles. You have to fix this angle uh, theta, say. Uh, the, the sine of this angle theta is, is defined to be the side that's opposite theta divided by the hypotenuse, so it would be A over C. The hypotenuse is the longest side. Um, the cosine of, of theta is the side that's adjacent to theta over the hypotenuse, which would be B over C. The tangent of, of theta would be the, the ratio of the side that's opposite theta divided by the side adjacent A over B, and so on. These three are the reciprocals of these three, right? Uh, some people like Sokotoa. I'm not, I'm not really a big Sokotoa fan, but, but all that means is sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over uh, adjacent. Another way to learn these is to do lots and lots of homework, right? It makes a huge difference which angle you're talking about on your right triangle here, see? The uh, trig functions of beta are not going to be the same as the trig functions of alpha, you see. Um, for example, the sine of beta would be the side opposite beta divided by the hypotenuse, B over C. But the sine of alpha would be the side opposite alpha divided by the hypotenuse, it would be A over C. Similarly, the cosine of beta would be the side that's adjacent to beta over the hypotenuse, A over C. But the cosine of alpha would be the side that's adjacent to alpha over the hypotenuse, it would be B over C. But this is how they are related. I mentioned alpha and beta are complementary angles, that means they add up to 90 degrees. Well that co from complementary is where we get the names of these trig functions, you see? The sine of beta is equal to the cosine of alpha. The co comes from the fact that alpha and beta are complementary angles. The sine of alpha is the cosine of beta. That works for all of them. The, the tangent of beta is equal to the cotangent of alpha, you see? And, and so anyway, that, that, that's, why we, that's why we give them their, their names. Alright, I thought you'd like to know that. Anyway, uh, let's see. Suppose I give you a triangle like this. That's a right triangle. Very important that it's a right triangle. And that this, this leg is 12, this leg is 5, and I want you to find the six trig functions of theta. Before you can do that, you need, you need to know all the sides. So you, you find C by the Pythagorean theorem. C turns out to be 13 centimeters. Once you do that, though, you can, uh, you can find all the trig functions. The sine of alpha, I should say the sine of theta. Sine of theta is the side opposite divided by the hypotenuse, so it's 5 over 13. The cosine of theta is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse, 12 over 13. And the tangent of theta is the opposite over adjacent, 5 over 12. The other, other three are just the reciprocals, aren't they? Suppose you're given the tangent of theta is 2, and you want to find the other five trig functions of theta. Well, first of all, if you draw a picture, the tangent of theta is 2 over 1, so let's call that 2 over 1, right? Opposite side would be 2, adjacent side would be 1. There's lots of other triangles you could draw, but this is one of them, right? And then, to, in order to find the rest of the trig functions, we've got to find c. Let's use the Pythagorean theorem to find c, so c would be the square root of 5. Once you have that, though, you can, you can certainly find the uh, six trig functions of theta. The sine of theta would be the opposite side over the hypotenuse, so it's 2 over square root of 5. Cosine of theta would be the adjacent over hypotenuse, 1 over square root of 5. Tangents 2, again, once you have these three, the other three are just the reciprocals, aren't they? Okay, now there's some special triangles that, that you'll learn. Uh, if you haven't already, you got to learn these. Um, uh, if you have a 30, 60, 90 right, right triangle, the sides appear in this ratio. Okay, uh, The hypotenuse 2, the shorter leg 1, and the... Um, the longer leg, radical 3. If you have a 45, this is called a 45 degree right right triangle. Of course, if one of the angles is 45, then the other one has to be 45 too, because they add up to 90, right? So it's, it's an isosceles right triangle, in fact. Um, uh, they'll be in this ratio, radical 2, 1, and 1. I actually like to um, use these triangles instead. It's no big deal. I just like to make the hypotenuse one on each of them. You do that by dividing all the all the legs by all, all the all the sides by two here, right? 
And you would do that in, uh, by dividing all the sides by ra radical 2 here and rationalizing. You should also know that, of course, you should have this down, that 30 degrees is pi over 6, 45 is pi over 4, and 60 is pi over 3. Okay, so here we go. Find x. I'm giving you a right triangle. This, this angle is 30. This is 5. Find x. Well, what you want to do is you want to find a ratio, uh, you want to find a trig function that involves this angle, this side, and this side. How about cosine? Cosine of 30 equals x over 5, so x equals 5 cosine 30. But recall, what is the cosine of 30? Cosine of 30 is adjacent over hypotenuse, so it would be radical 3 over 2. So that's your answer, 5 radical 3 over 2 inches. How about this one? How do you find x here? Well, if you look carefully, you want to find a trig function that relates this angle, this side, and this side. I'm going to use tangent 60. Tangent 60 would be 10 over x, so x equals 10 tangent 60. Um, x tangent 60 equals 10, so x equals 10 divided by tan 60, but what is the tangent of 60? Well, the tangent of 60, if you go over here for a second, it's the same triangle we are looking at before, but here's, here's our 60 degree angle. The tangent is the opposite over adjacent, so you get radical 3 over 2 over 1 half, which is just radical. When we say solve the triangle, that means find all the missing pieces. I'm giving you this angle is pi over 6, and I'm giving you this is a right triangle, and that the, this side is 4. Well, look, folks, if this is 90, and this is, pi, this is pi over 2, I should say, this is pi over 6, this has to be pi over 3, right? Because these two have to add up to 90 degrees. And then, so, uh, how would you find the other two sides? Well, you could, you could say the sine pi over 6 is y over 4, which is 1 half, right? Sine pi over 6 is 1 half. So you solve it for y, you get y equals 2. And then the cosine of pi over 6 would be what? The cosine would be x over 4 which we know is radical 3 over 2, right? Cosine pi over 6 is radical 3 over 2. You solve that for x, you get x equals 2 times the square root of 3. Nice. This one, um, you get, um, uh, if you're given this angle is pi over 4, and this is 3, well, this is, has to be pi over 4 also. So you, and this has to be 3, because remember, this is an isosceles right triangle. So x has to be 3, and alpha has to be pi over 4. All you, all you need to do now is find uh, y. You could find y by the Pythagorean theorem, or if you use cosine, cosine pi over 4 equals 3 over y, which is also radical 2 over 2. So if you cross multiply and solve for y, you get 6 over square root of 2. Let's keep on going. Now, you might not have a, um, a right, um, you might not have, a, I should say, a, a one of our known angles. You may have like 40 degrees, for example. Uh, so if, if you're given this is 40, this is a right triangle, this is 12, you know this is 50 because these two add up to 90 degrees. How would you find x? Well, you could use cosine of 40 equals x over 12, so x equals 12 cosine 40. You'd punch that in your ca calculator to make sure you're in the degree mode. Just hit 12 times cosine 40 degrees. You get about 9.2 inches. And similarly, if you want to find y, you could use the sine of 40 is y over 12. When you solve for y, you get 7.7. .7. This is kind of inter interesting. What if I don't give you any of these two angles, I just give you these two sides? Well, you could say that the sine of alpha is 6 over 10, couldn't you? Which is 0. 0.6. And so there may, may be times when you have to go from the sine of the angle to the angle. In this case, you'd use the inverse sine. We'll talk more about that later, but on your ca calculator, if the sine of alpha is 0. 0.6, then alpha has to equal inverse sine of 0. 0.6. You'd hit the second, then you'd hit your sign, inverse sine button, and you hit 0. 0.6. So you go like this. You'd hit um, second, inverse sine, 0.6, and you'd get about 37 degrees. That's what I got. Uh, once you know alpha is 37, though, then you could find beta has to add up to 90, you get 53. And then to find x, you could use the Pythagorean theorem, or another way, you should get 8 centimeters. On this one, you're given uh, this triangle here. This is 60, this is 30. You want to find x. Some Sometimes, I just want to warn you, some, sometimes you have to... Um, let new, you have to introduce new variables. Let's call this distance A and this distance B. So A plus B equals X. What you could say is that the cosine of 60, or I should say the tangent of 60, equals 10 over A, right? And then you would solve this for A, you get A equals 10 square root of, over square root of 3 inches. And then for this one, you could say that, um, what, the tangent of 30 equals 10 over B? So then you, you, you solve for b, and you get b equals 10 times the square root of 3 inches, and you add those together, and you get, uh, you add those together, x equals a plus b. 
So you get 40 over square root of 3 inches. Nice, huh? All right, we got to go. Bye-bye.